Perry Beach in Scarborough, Maine, with my assignment in hand. It was the end of summer, and it had been a very long summer. We had been chasing my son's baseball team to a state championship and down to Bristol, Connecticut for the Eastern Regionals and the Little League World Series. And on the very day we got back, we had to take him to soccer practice. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thankfully, I had a session with Lael and got to talk about that agitation and start to explore what that was because it felt a little bit different than my usual summer agitation. And so as we talked about it, she said, well, you know, if you're really mad about summer being over, why don't you just go to the beach and scream? Just get it out. I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Not me. I'm Miss Button, now corporate. I don't scream on the beach. <laughs>
husband, check. Good health, check. Great kids, check. A wonderful and successful career, check. So what could be missing? As I've sat with that question in preparing this story, I realized that connection is what is missing for me. Which is ironic because I'm a great connector. Um, in high school, all the kids came to my house. We were the ones with the go-kart track in the backyard. <laughs> And in work, I'm a natural networker. It's how I have been successful in my business, is by reaching out to people. But again, the irony is that I just don't feel that connected. And the story that I tell myself is that everybody has it but me. And it's, it certainly can seem that way when we look at Facebook. That's a thread tonight. We're all on Facebook. Um, you know, I can look at hosts of high school buddies who get together for their annual girls weekend or you know a bunch of friends going to Vegas for a for a trip. And I think, geez, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So it just feels like there's a party in the village and I'm not invited <coughs> and I just feel kind of hollow from that. But the flip side of that is that Facebook does create a sense of community. Um, you know, it's a great way to uh, reach out to people, and I know so many uh, of my friends, we, we reach out, we connect. I know if I'm having a hard day, <laughs> I tend to post things to get little hugs back, you know, and likes, because I want to reach out to people or to share a laugh and make people laugh. I love that. And so that's all the good part of Facebook. But Recently, as I've looked at um, particularly some of the folks that I share comments with, I realized I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs>
So that feeling, all of those emotions came out, and I was just so thankful for that release because I had been holding it for so long, holding myself together because you never know when that phone was going to ring and she'd be on the other end and you had to be strong. Um, so once I got that out, I came back to the circle and we gave everybody hugs. There were the promises of staying in touch, and, and we've tried, many of us have. Um, but, it, you know, it's just so hard today. Our lives are so busy. Um, and it just has, it, it's just really been quite a contrast to have a weekend like that and to realize that I just want more of that on an ongoing basis. Um, let's see. So when I, when I think about what I want that connection to look like, it's really the opportunity to be seen and to be heard, to be vulnerable and to cry. My husband holds me when I cry, but as I thought about this as I was writing this story, I realized I don't think I've ever really cried with any friend. And I've never let my heart open wide enough to let them in. And sometimes I don't think I've let my heart be open enough to let them in. And so I can tell myself that, you know, eh, it's hard to do that over a cup of coffee at Starbucks or at a party with 20 other people. <laughs> um, but then I, I really do have to look and be honest with myself that there's only one minute left. <laughs> I reach out to you, 
or if you reach out to me and if we see the walls that are there, let's pick up a hammer and start to chip away. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>